All right, I'm not going to read this, but I, I know what the first question is. Net neutrality. FCC voted for it, figured out a way to do it. You got caught by the courts the first time. You figured out a way to basically make it a, a, a utility. So um, obviously the world wants to hear your thoughts on why, how, how you're going to keep it, why it's important. I'm just going to turn the mic over to you on that. Well, uh, Kevin, I mean, it's, um, you know, when you stop and think about it, that the Internet is the most important pathway of the 21st century, and it needs to be fast, it needs to be fair, and it needs to be open. And you can't have people sitting as gatekeepers on this incredible pathway. Um, it thwarts innovation, um, it denies consumers service, and so what we have been doing um, is setting up a set of simple rules that says you won't block traffic, you won't throttle traffic, you won't charge for prioritizing traffic, and you'll make sure that consumers and edge providers know just exactly what you're offering and what the terms of that are. And then, the most interesting thing is we will put, we have put, a referee on the field. Because, you know, we can't guess what's going to happen next. But somebody ought to be in a position where they can look and say, no, that's not a just and reasonable activity, and throw the flag. And, um, and the great thing is, um, the, as you can imagine, the, those who are covered uh, by the rule weren't too terribly happy about it, and they took us to court to try to get the court to overturn it. And uh, earlier this week, the uh, D.C. Circuit Court, uh, the Court of Appeals, um, came through in a decision that was pretty explicit, saying, yes, the FCC can do this, and yes, there's justification for all of this. And so it sets the what the boundaries will be and what the basic rules will be um, for uh, the Internet um, for the years going forward. Uh, so it's a, it's a very important decision. Fantastic. Um, what are some of the other policies or initiatives the FCC is working on on getting in place beyond net neutrality? Because you, you cover so much, all communications, basically. So what are some of the other uh, sort of big points that you're working on? Well, you know, we have, have, not, have not only the responsibility to oversee how networks operate, but also we're the folks who are in charge of spectrum. And, um, and as everything increasingly goes wireless, um, there is great pressure on spectrum. So, for instance, as we sit here, we are running the world's first broadcast incentive auction. What's that mean? So you've got broadcasters, over-the-air broadcasters, sitting on spectrum in the 700 megahertz band, which is beachfront property in the spectrum world. And, um, and we went to them and said, tell you what, we'll buy your spectrum back from you then we will reband it and sell it to wireless carriers. And so it's a two-sided uh, auction, and we're in the process right now of, uh, of going through and buying spectrum from the broadcasters. Then we'll turn around and, uh, and see if the wireless industry is willing to step up and, uh, and, and put it to use. But it's, a, it's how do you use the marketplace to put spectrum, which you probably noticed they're not making it anymore, okay? How do you, how do you put Spectrum to its highest and best use? Um, uh, another thing we're doing with regard to Spectrum as well is uh, 5G Spectrum, the next generation of wireless services, which is going to be 10 to 100 times faster than what we're used to today with 4G and um, almost no latency. So that'll change the entire wireless experience. 
and um, and uh, next month, July, um, uh, we're going to identify and open up brand new spectrum um, to be used for 5G purposes, and we will be the first nation in the world to have identified spectrum for 5G, and I hope that that will manifest itself with the United States taking leadership in what the 5G future looks like. So, so that's a whole nother side of, of what we do, but managing spectrum and getting it to its highest and best purposes is a major undertaking for us. Yeah, I think, I, I think uh, most people may not realize, it because you said something interesting, they're not making more spectrum true, but people go, well, if there's five gigahertz, there's 10, there's 100 gigahertz. People don't realize the lower the frequency, which we gave away 50 years ago, the more it passes through walls and other buildings and things like that. So beachfront property is 700 megahertz, 500 megahertz, things that were given away a long time ago for almost no money. And they're very valuable today. And, and in fact, television, which is delivered in a new way, video, which is delivered in a new way, is probably less valuable in that spectrum than it used to be. So it's an interesting time. Um, I'll, I'll end uh, uh, with, uh, with, with this. When you look out <clears throat> 10 or 20 years, so the FCC, when was the FCC formed? 1934. You didn't have the mic, so I'll repeat it. Uh, 1934. Um, in 1934, you know, they were looking at the advent of radio and some advent of television, you know, some, some years in the future and maybe some military frequencies, not a lot, and they were all pretty low. Today, what is your vision? If you looked out 10 or 20 years, what's your vision for where communications moves and how does the FCC think about that today so that they're prepared 10, 20, 30 years in the future? I know that's a little off cue card, but I think you've got uh, some vision around that and we'd love to hear it. <laughs> Well, Kevin, I mean, that's a, that's a fabulous question because, um, well, first of all, you know, you're a visionary, you're an entrepreneur, you and I both know we can't predict where things are going to be in 10 years. But here's what we do know. We are sitting right now at a point where Moore's Law and wireless connectivity have gotten married. And that's going to change the whole way we think about computing and we think about connected computing. And as you talk about increasingly more powerful and less expensive semiconductors, and then you put them, you interconnect them with um, with high-speed wireless 5G connectivity, you've just rewritten the rule book. And, um, and, and so you know that high-speed, low-latency will redefine the kinds of things that could be done. You know, when, when we did fourth generation, whoever imagined Uber right, or, or Airbnb, or these kinds of things that were enabled as a result of that. So I'm not sure what this marriage will enable, but it will be the, the, the marriage that defines the basis for the innovation that takes place here in the Valley. Because everything's gonna be connected, and everything's gonna be intelligent. And, um, and so our job, to, you, you said, so what do you at the FCC do about that? So our job becomes, okay, let's make sure that we've got the, uh, the spectrum available. And let's make sure that those who are managing the spectrum and building the networks, keep those networks open so that innovation is encouraged. And, um, and then you and I can come back in 10 years and look at this tape and say, yep, you're right. We didn't think that that would ever happen that evening, but the FCC put in place the policies that enabled whatever that unimagined thing to come about. 
Well, Tom, thank you, uh, and congratulations for your award tonight. Uh, well earned throughout your life for many, many things that we'll talk about later. And uh, I have to say, I've, I've uh, been fortunate en enough to know many of the FCC chairs over the years, but I think you are the most visionary and the most thoughtful looking forward to prepare this country for what could come in the next several decades. So thank you for, for serving the public in the way you do.